Hi everyone, so I'm still working hard on my serial killer video, but I don't want to rush things, so this one is a bit of a stopgap, and is shorter, but no less interesting. Saying that, this video comes with a strong warning. The man I'm covering today is one of the worst paedophiles I've covered on this channel, and the details of his crimes are very disturbing. So please, please, if this will distress you, click off now. As I've said previously, your mental health is more important than views. If you need to go, then thank you for visiting the channel. Anyway, on with the video. Jad Brooker is a truly evil man. His life was utterly devoted to the abuse of children. By the time of his eventual arrest in 2020, he had amassed 4.5 million images showing children, including babies, being raped, tortured and degraded. In the space of just four years, Brooker himself had victimised at least 96 children around the world, including exploiting them online, all for his own gratification. However, as if this wasn't horrific enough, Brooker, who suffered from HIV, molested children in the real world in order to specifically infect them with this incurable condition, with him bragging about this and showing pictures of this abuse online with a network of paedophiles that spanned continents. Jad Brooker is a remorseless child predator whose offending resulted in at least one child taking their own life. He's now considered one of Australia's worst paedophiles. Welcome to Evil Among Us. There have been few details published about Jad William Brooker, as it appears that until his arrest in 2020, he was believed to be a law-abiding citizen. In terms of his background, Brooker was born in around 1982, and in court, it was reported that he grew up in the city of Adelaide, in the state of South Australia. His parents separated when he was young, but it states that he grew up in a happy home, with no evidence of abuse, and Brooker apparently had a good relationship with both parents, splitting his time between them, and his positive relationship with his mother and father continued into adulthood. Whilst his home life was apparently positive, Brooker later claimed that he was the victim of sexual abuse from the age of around 13 years old, with him telling a psychologist that he was molested by multiple men at a local shopping centre. Whether this is true or not is unclear, but we'll get into that later. Brooker finished school and had a good employment history. He came out as gay when he was a teenager and had a number of adult relationships. On paper, he was just an ordinary man living his life, like millions of other Australians. But Jad Brooker was a master at wearing a mask, and behind closed doors, he was a depraved paedophile, an extremely dangerous man, who, in my opinion, if he'd not been stopped, could have potentially progressed to killing children. Despite his outwardly friendly and generally banal appearance, Jad Brooker was a man obsessed with sex. Since he was around 18 years old, he'd become addicted to drugs, pornography, and meeting men online for sex through applications such as Grindr. By 2016, he'd become addicted to crystal meth, and his risky and deviant sexual behaviour was becoming more frequent. But despite this, he was able to maintain his job and his social life. During the same year, Brooker was exploring the darkest corners of the internet, collecting hundreds of child abuse images every day, and contacting other paedophiles online. By the time of his eventual arrest in 2020, Jad Brooker had accumulated 4.5 million still and moving images, which showed some of the most depraved material the detectives had ever seen. This included movies showing men strangling and raping babies, men abusing infants who were asleep, unconscious or dead, as well as sexual contact between animals and children, and lastly, children, sometimes babies and infants, screaming whilst being raped by men, in some cases believed to be their own fathers. Police were also able to recover approximately 50,000 messages Brooker sent to other paedophiles as he trawled the internet looking for material to add to his collection. In one conversation, a man that Brooker was speaking to said he had videos showing rape and necrophilia, and Brooker responded saying, quote, Fuck yes, I've been searching for this stuff forever. However, Jad Brooker was not interested in just watching others abusing children. He wanted to do this himself, and he targeted dozens of children online for his own sick gratification. As if this wasn't evil enough, in around 2016, Jad Brooker contracted HIV, and this appears to have been due to one of his sexual encounters with a man he met online. 
and after this point, he began to search for children to meet in the real world to deliberately infect with this condition. In order to increase the likelihood of this happening, he stopped taking his antiviral medication. Between 2016 and 2020, Jad Brooker abused at least 96 children, both online and in the real world, resulting in at least one suicide and the lives of many others and their families being utterly destroyed. The judge who sentenced Brooker didn't outline all of his offending due to the sheer number of crimes he committed and how heinous they were. But what he went through, I'll go through in detail or summarise. Because of this, the warning at the beginning of the video is reiterated. The victims were referred to by initials in court proceedings, but I will assign them pseudonyms to reiterate that these are real children. So in 2016, Jad Brooker began speaking to a boy called Daniel on Grinder. He set his age as 18 on the app so he could use it, but was honest that he was 16 years old when he began speaking to people. This meant he was a year below the age of consent in South Australia, which is 17 years old. Brooker began grooming Daniel, with them talking about masturbation, and Brooker soon sent him new pics of himself and asked the same from Daniel. The conversation quickly moved to Skype, where Daniel was forced to watch Brooker masturbating on camera. Brooker repeatedly mentioned to Daniel about meeting up, but this luckily never happened. Daniel was one of around 80 plus children that Brooker victimised, exploited and abused online between 2016 and 2020, and this included multiple children in Australia, America, Italy and the UK amongst other countries. He would take great pleasure in directing them to perform sexual acts of increasing depravity. Police found evidence that some children had sent pictures to Brooker aimedly penetrating themselves with objects with ligatures around their neck and pictures of at least one child covered in their own feces. Brooker would encourage these acts with disgusting phrases such as telling one child to quote fuck himself like you want daddy to fuck you. Brooker was adept at choosing vulnerable children, those from broken homes, those who had already been abused emotionally, physically and potentially sexually by others. He was a skilled manipulator and would employ various tactics. Many of these children he would flatter with compliments, saying they were beautiful and that he genuinely cared for them. Others he would see their self-loathing and exploit this to the fullest, making them degrade themselves for his pleasure and telling at least one explicitly that he wanted to rape them. With one child, he claimed he could find them a partner as he had contacts across the country, but these contacts would only help if this child sent naked pictures of themselves in poses which he dictated. However, Judd Brooker was not content with just exploiting children online, he wanted to abuse them in the real world. Brooker abused and raped, because that's what it is, several children who he met online. It's not stated explicitly how many victims he had in the real world, but by my calculation, based on his charges, this was at least six children. This is likely a small fraction of his victims. This included Jack, who in January 2017 was just 14 years old. He joined an online gay website for men, and whilst he checked the box saying he was 18 years old, he was honest about the fact that he was 14 years old when he began chatting to men. One of these men was Jad Brooker, who began grooming him immediately, sending him pictures of his penis and requesting the same in return. Around a week after they first started talking, the pair met, with Brooker picking Jack up outside his school. He took him back to his house, and Brooker performed oral sex on him. Over the next year, or whilst Jack was no more than 15 years old, Brooker molested him at least three more times, either picking him up from school, or ordering an Uber to bring him to the property. At no point did he use protection, despite knowing that he was HIV positive. I was not taking any antiviral medication. Jad Brooker filmed his sexual abuse of Jack and sent this to other paedophiles online. Kevin was living in New South Wales and was just 12 years old when he was targeted by Brooker in December 2017. Kevin, it appears, was a particularly vulnerable child from a difficult family background who was lonely and suffered from mental health issues. The abuse began with Kevin being targeted by Brooker online and he quickly began engaging in explicit conversations with him, telling Kevin that he wanted to engage in oral and anal sex with him. The communication went on for months, and eventually, in August 2018, Brooker stated he wished their sexual acts to involve feces 
and that he would force Kevin to perform oral sex on him whilst his genitals were covered in his own waist. In December 2018, Brooker sent this child a video of himself defecating. In 2019, Brooker met with Kevin in the real world, with him being about 14 or 15 years old at this point. Brooker had anal and oral sex with Kevin and took photographs during each stage of the abuse. Police later found the photos, which showed that Brooker had not used any protection and had then sent these images to other perverts online. It appears that sexual contact happened on several occasions after this point. James had just turned 16 years old when he was targeted by Brooker in late 2018. He was a regular user of social media platforms and was also confused about his sexuality. He downloaded Grindr and lied about his age in order to sign up. James was targeted by Brooker soon after he began using the app and, as he'd done with other people, he told Brooker his real age. This appeared to excite him and he soon asked to meet this child and convinced him to send pictures of his penis to him. Within weeks of first talking, Brooker and James met in December 2018 with him picking this boy up from school. The pair then went back to Brooker's property where he had unprotected anal and oral sex with James. At the beginning of 2019, the pair met twice more within quick succession. On each occasion, Brooker sent an Uber to pick up this 16 year old child to bring to his home where there was further sexual contact. As was his routine, Brooker filmed the abuse. Neil had just turned 16 when he downloaded the Grindr app in late 2019. Brooker began talking to Neil, who quickly told him his age, and the fact that he was a child again seemed to arouse Brooker. Brooker sent in decent photographs of himself, and the pair quickly met in a shop where they went into the toilets and engaged in sexual acts. Brooker attempted to have anal sex with Neil, but was unsuccessful, but did perform oral sex on him. A few months later, in around May 2020, the pair met again, with Brooker picking up Neil in his car and driving him to a car park, where he abused him. Reports consistently state that a further child that Brooker abused in the real world committed suicide due to the trauma they'd suffered. However, there's also the implication, in some reports that I've read, that there was actually two children that committed suicide. The fact that Jack Brooker's actions resulted in the death of a child, or potentially two, makes him a murderer in my book. As well as one or two children who took their own lives, several others attempted it. Chad Brooker failing to use protection with these children was not accidental, it was completely deliberate. Police found evidence that he bragged online that he was having sex with children and was deliberately trying to infect them with HIV. The child abuse material he created and sent was not only for the sexual pleasure of perverts around the world, but also to show them that he was serious in his claims and to get praise and encouragement for his sick mission. He was connected to one paedophile network that included at least 40 abuses of children, with him being seen as a respected, even revered member due to the sheer quantity of child abuse material he had. As well as bragging about the rapes he was committing and the fact that he was trying to infect children with HIV, Brooker also spoke about his hopes for the future. He said that he wanted to traffic and sell children to paedophiles around the world. There's no evidence that he went this far, but as we'll get to later, I don't think there was anything that Jad Brooker wouldn't do in order to get sexual gratification and to get praise from his fellow perverts. Thankfully, Jad Brooker's reign of terror would come to an end and the true scale of his offending would shock Australia. The downfall of Jad Brooker began on August 25th, 2020 when officers from South Australia's Joint Anti-Child Exploitation Team knocked on a front door. However, this was not the front door of Brooker. This one belonged to 34-year-old Michael James Drennan, a barista who lived in Ethelton, a northwestern suburb of Adelaide. Drennan had come to police attention because they'd received intelligence that he was accessing child abuse images from his home. He was found to have been receiving and distributing images to others, including videos of little boys being raped by adult men. For his crimes, in July 2021, Michael Drennan was sent to prison for two years, but his arrest was just the start, and the dominoes quickly began to fall. Interrogation of Drennan's phones and computer revealed dozens of conversations that he'd been having with other paedophiles in the ring that he was part of, including Jad Brooker. Police subsequently arrested at least 10 men in Australia and passed information to forces internationally about the actions of dozens more depraved men 
scattered across the globe. The police's investigation led them into the halls of power and included the arrest and conviction of 39-year-old Benjamin John Waters and advised to MP Nat Cook, who was found in possession of 600 child abuse images. In court, he pleaded guilty but claimed that he'd only viewed this in order to better understand why people would be interested in watching this type of material, whilst also claiming he didn't have a sexual interest in children. I mean, it's complete bollocks. It transpired that Waters would access and watch this material at work. Whilst he could have faced a maximum of 15 years in prison for accessing, transmitting and possessing child abuse images, Waters was sentenced to just 8 months home detention because he'd apparently had a rough time being in jail for 3 months after his arrest. Another person arrested was 37-year-old Stuart Ian Berry, a senior officer and acting manager for the Department of Correctional Services. He initially tried to stop his name from being published as he argued it would cause him reputational harm. Berry admitted abusing a teenage boy, accessing and distributing indecent images to children, and secretly filming other children. In February 2024, Berry was sentenced to just six years in prison, and he could be released in just four years, eleven months' time. I highlight these other offenders for a couple of reasons. Firstly, to show the type of people who are in the same paedophile ring alongside Jad Brooker. It went from coffee workers to those working in positions of power, and this was just in Australia. God knows who was in contact with overseas. However, I also mention these men, and I use this term loosely, to highlight the ridiculous sentences. So your punishment for watching hundreds of hours of children being raped is to get a home detention curfew. Abuse a child, you can get out in five years. This highlights the weakness of the Australian criminal justice system. And they're not alone. Many countries appear to not take the gravity of this type of crime seriously. As far as I'm concerned, if you abuse children, or you get pleasure from watching others doing this, you deserve to be in prison for a very long time. No question, no excuses. The weakness of the judiciary is relevant to this case, and I'll circle back to it in a moment. As for Jad Brooker, as I said, it was the original arrest of Michael James Drennan in August 2020, which brought police straight to his door. Brooker was arrested at his home in Glenelg East, a residential suburb southwest of the centre of Adelaide. He was arrested a few days after Drennan, and all of his electronic devices were seized. A cursory check of these showed that they were dealing with a very dangerous and committed paedophile. They identified that Brooker was in possession of around 4.5 million indecent images of children, and they also recovered over 50,000 messages across nine messaging applications related to child abuse and the sexual exploitation of minors. Brooker was quickly charged for offences related to possession and distribution of child abuse images whilst investigations continued, and he was remanded into prison. Whilst there, he spoke to his mother and asked her to delete online accounts as a way to destroy evidence. This call was recorded by the prison. Unbelievably, and circling back to the weakness of the judiciary, on September the 3rd, 2020, Brooker appeared at Christie's Beach Magistrate's Court, where Magistrate Rodney Oates granted him bail to live at his grandmother's address. This was despite the charges he was facing, and the court being informed by the police they were certain he'd abused children in the real world, and they had found conversations where he was breaking about trying to infect children with HIV. Also, he was clearly trying to destroy evidence. The police explained that it was early in their investigation, but the sheer volume of evidence could take thousands of man-hours to go through. Despite this, Magistrate Oates said, quote, I do take into account the fact other charges are being investigated, but, in relation to this bail application, I must focus on the charges that are before the court. He continued, Conditions and measures can be put in place to ensure the integrity of the ongoing investigation. Luckily, the prosecution instantly appealed this to the Supreme Court, and Brooker's release was blocked. I mean, how fucking stupid was that decision? It's like people who preside over these cases have no idea how criminals work. All the signs were pointing to the fact that Jad Brooker was a prolific paedophile, so what did he think he was going to do when he got out? Sit at home, reflect on his behaviour, sit there crying with remorse? Or would this have likely spurred him on to abuse as many children as possible in order to fulfil his mission to infect a child with HIV, knowing full well that when the police went through all of the images and documents on his computer, he would be going away forever and potentially never get the opportunity again. I think it would be a very different reaction if there were children that he knew in those images. But why should it matter? They're somebody's children. Eventually, 
Jad Brooker was charged with 182 sexual abuse and exploitation offences against 96 children across the world. The offences could be proved were due to painstaking investigative work on the part of the police, searching through all the images and conversations of the Brooker collections over the years. Horrifically, it appears only 10 of these victims have ever actually been identified by their real names, given support, and were able to have their moment in court, staring down their abuser and telling Brooker how he destroyed their lives. The others were simply identified by usernames and pictures that were recovered. Out of the children that were identified, who Brooker had had unprotected sexual contact with in the real world, thankfully it appears that none of them have contracted HIV. However, as I'll come to later, I suspect there are far more victims of his than there are likely children out in the world who he did infect. Across two hearings at Adelaide Magistrates Court in late 2021, Jad Brooker pleaded guilty to all offences. This had nothing to do with remorse, it was simply to try and get time off his sentence. It took two years for Jad Brooker to be sentenced. During this time, he'd been assessed by several psychologists and psychiatrists who prepared reports. These were referenced by Justice Kimber when Brooker stood before him for sentencing on the 20th of December 2023 at the Supreme Court of South Australia. Justice Kimber outlined how to one psychiatrist, Brooker had attempted to blame his drug use for his offending and took little responsibility for his actions. Another reported that Brooker had little to no empathy for his victims and appeared to have no concept of the gravity of his behaviour. To a psychologist, Jad Brooker made the ridiculous claim that he'd once been attracted to children, but since being in prison, he was over that and was now attracted to men in their 20s and 30s. Justice Kimber stated the following quote, Your risk of reoffending is particularly high. Were you not in custody, you would pose a grave risk of engaging in sexual activity with adolescent males, both in person and by communicating. In my view, you would also be at grave risk of possessing, accessing and disseminating images of children. On any view, you need intensive treatment. No meaningful prediction can be made of your prospects of rehabilitation at this time. You will need to participate in appropriate programs whilst in custody. There are reasons to be cautious about your insights into your offending. As I said, I cannot accept that your sexual interest in children is behind you. He continued, As will be obvious from the summary that I've given, viewed as a whole, your offending is exceptionally grave. The victims are almost too many to count. I will not repeat what I said about offending against children towards the beginning of my remarks. I simply observe that you have placed at risk the well-being and future potential of every victim. The need for denunciation and personal deterrence is great. Some of your offender confirms what is well known, that is, that there are other like-minded people in our community who pose a risk to children. Networks of people prepared to access, share and receive images of children. The prosecution argued for Jad Brooker to be jailed indefinitely, never to be released. However, his lack of any previous convictions and his early guilty pleas gained him credit and so, for his horrific campaign of abuse of almost 100 children, Jad Brooker was sentenced to 36 years in prison, with him having to serve 29 years before he can apply for parole. Brooker was 41 years old when he was sentenced, and taking into account time on remand, he should be able to apply for parole in around 2049, when he'd be in his late 60s. I've read that applications were made to the Supreme Court to keep Jad Brooker behind prison walls for the rest of his life, but at the current time, it appears there is a possibility, however slim, that this monster will one day be back out in the world, and I've no doubt he would pick up exactly where he left off and potentially create hundreds more victims. The devastation that Jad Brooker caused to so many lives, not only the children he abused but their families, should never be forgotten. In court, the mother of Neil read out a victim impact statement, which stated that Brooker had taken advantage of a child whose innocence he had completely destroyed. She stated that she'd seen her son fall apart and suppress his feelings. Neil's mother described feeling pain and anxiety about the fact that her son had been abused, and she described the agony of waiting for his HIV results to come back. One of Brooker's victims spoke outside of court and was interviewed. I'll play that clip for you now. Um, yeah, he's a, he was a vile, vile man. Some of the things that were read out, I didn't even know he did. Uh, some of the victims cannot be here today, but 
is that I think that this is a starting point of some closure to those families that have been affected today. Um, really, really, I hope this sentence is a life sentence for him. How would you describe some of that defending that you heard today? I broke down in tears. Um, some of the victims are no longer living. They, their stories aren't able to be told and heard. They aren't able to speak for themselves. Um, yeah, a lot of us broke down. We were horrified. We were sick to our stomachs. Do you believe that he understands the gravity of what he's done? He knew what he was doing. And the ability to say that he didn't is just wrong. He knew the impact that he was having on those children. He knew what he was doing. He was in the right frame of mind. And he chose to commence and go through with his actions. And knowing that he did that on more than one occasion with hundreds is just, I, I can't fathom that. Do you believe this is justice, some form of justice at least, if he's going to be locked away? I would say it's at least opening the door to some sort of torture. Um, I, I can't speak for every family, but for my own personal self, I feel like this is the half, halfway mark for my closure um, when I uh, deal with Jack Brooker. Um, I can't speak for every family, but that's just mine. Also, to reiterate, as it's very important to mention, a young man, potentially two, committed suicide because of Jad Brooker's actions. This is just the victims we know about. There are at least 80 plus children who were never identified, who are still out there, dealing with the trauma of being abused by this monster. And unfortunately, likely by other predators, who are willing to destroy the life of a child just to get their sick kicks. To be clear, the people responsible for these crimes the paedophiles, the depraved predators who trawl the internet looking for victims. But as parents it's very important to keep a close eye on what your children are doing. If they have a mobile phone, make sure there are parental controls, which means they cannot access applications such as Grindr. Parental controls also need to be placed on internet in the home. Also, check their internet activity, messages they're sending, pictures they're taking. I get it, this would cause tension. But honestly, these monsters will look for any opportunity to groom and molest children. I think you'll agree that an awkward conversation with your child, or even a blazing row, is better than their life being completely destroyed. I need to reiterate the warning that I've mentioned on a couple of occasions during this video again. I'm going to go into detail about distressing topics, so please click away if this will upset you. So this case is truly horrifying, especially when you realise that the offences for which Jad Brooker was convicted are likely just the tip of the iceberg. With crimes this serious, they're almost always part of a progression. At the core of this case is the fact that Brooker felt that he was entitled to use children in any way he wanted in order to make himself feel powerful and in control of his life. They were an outlet for his pent up rage, his feelings of inadequacy, his inability to cope in life. Abusing them was also his way of getting praise and respect from others. So starting from the beginning, there's almost no information about Brooker's early life, aside from his claim that he was sexually abused as a child. This may or may not be true, and I do approach this with a degree of scepticism. Unfortunately, people who commit these types of crimes will often falsely claim that they were also victims of sexual abuse as a child, using this as a manipulative tactic to try and essentially say, yes I did these things, but they were done to me, so I am a victim too, and this helps to gain sympathy and to justify their behaviour. However, even if this is true, like any childhood trauma, it doesn't give you the right to harm others. Being a victim yourself doesn't give you a free pass to make victims of others. Whether this occurred or not, I believe the important thing is that there was some level of trauma in his early life, which meant that Brooker struggled to cope and likely had significant emotional difficulties and low self-esteem. I believe the evidence of this comes from the fact that he began abusing drugs at the age of 18. Often those who abuse drugs and alcohol are using them as a crutch to get through the day, which is a reflection of their underlying emotional difficulties. Life is much easier 
if you're high or drunk. However, this was not Jack Brooker's primary way of making himself feel better and trying to escape his troubles. His main method was sexual behaviour. It's clear that this came in two forms, internet pornography and meeting men off the internet for casual encounters. We'll start with pornography first. I've seen this pattern so many times in both homosexual and heterosexual men I can't even count. So people who heavily rely on pornography to make themselves feel better and eventually end up viewing decent images of children usually begin by viewing, for want of a better term, normal content. When they aren't getting the same level of arousal or gratification from this, they'll move to legal pornography which skirts the line between legal and illegal material. This includes pornography produced which is clearly intended to imply that illegal acts are taking place. A classic example of this is where you may have an adult actor or actress who looks very young who's dressed up like a school-aged child, or you have older men and a younger actor or actress and it's implied they're related, hinting that you're watching incest. After watching this, they again become desensitised. They don't want to watch something that implies illegal acts, they want to watch the illegal acts themselves. And so, they look for more extreme material to get the same thrill. This is often where they begin to view images of children. This can start with accessing websites in Eastern Europe, which ostensibly say that they're modelling websites, when clearly they're pandering to paedophiles. This gives the viewer a sense of excitement. They get off on the fact that what they're doing is illegal. However, again, this only lasts so long, the thrill wears off, and so they look for worse material, younger children, more horrific sexual acts, always chasing that high. Eventually, people who've been doing this for years can progress to watching horrific acts of rape and torture against babies. It's common to see these same people have material showing acts depicting sexual contact between animals and adults, and sometimes, in the case of Brooker, children and animals. Again, the draw here is how depraved the material is. He also had developed arousal to sexual acts involving feces. Again, this deviates massively for what most people would consider normal. Watching this sort of depravity day in, day out, would have utterly twisted Brooker's perception of how to behave. Children would have become just objects to him, pieces of meat to be used and abused, just for his sexual gratification. But more than that, as time went on, I've no doubt that he enjoyed watching children being harmed, raped, strangled, or in some other way violated. This was likely how he coped with difficult periods in his life. For you and I, we would talk to a friend or go for a walk. Jad Brooker would watch children being abused, seeing their pain and suffering made him feel better about his own situation. I imagine he began fantasizing about being the abuser, having that control and power over a child. He was able to live this out online, finding often damaged children who he could convince to engage in disgusting acts of degradation and abuse. He no doubt felt very powerful, clicking his fingers and telling these boys what he wanted them to do. It takes a man with no soul, no humanity, to see a child who's lonely, abused, potentially mentally unwell, and see them not as someone who should be protected, but as a thing to degrade, including getting them to cover themselves with their own waste. However, there's an additional factor, and that's the influence of others. In order to obtain this material, paedophiles will often be part of networks who share these horrific videos and content. Along with this, there'll often be truly disturbing comments with them regaling each other with stories of things they've done to children or want to do to them. Status within these groups comes from being the best sharer, the one with unique images, the one who's committed the most sickening acts on children. I think that due to this, Jad Brooker also equated the abuse of children with status. If he could top what others were doing, then he would be revered, respected by his fellow paedophiles. Moving to the second point, him meeting people online for sex. Again, this was about him making himself feel better about himself. No doubt there would have been a rush for meeting men online, signing into an app, and within minutes, being able to arrange a sexual encounter. This would have likely made him feel wanted, and in that moment, during the sexual contact, he could forget his troubles. However, again, as time progressed, he would have needed a greater thrill, more excitement. How he achieved this is unclear, but I believe, like his online activity, it involved children. His offending shows that he was adept at seeking out and grooming children and arranging to meet them within minutes of first contact. 
He showed no hesitation, no concern he might get caught. This was a man who'd done this before, many, many times before 2016, when his offences apparently started. So even before the period of his offending, covered in the court case, Jack Brooker's sexual interest was so deviant, so abhorrent, that he would watch videos showing the rape and torture of babies, sexual acts between animals and children, as well as sexual acts involving feces, and this was all totally normal for him, likely the only way he could get aroused, and what he turned to, in order to cope with negative emotions and difficulties in his life. He would also likely already met and abused children in the real world, and was also fantasising about violating them in some way, in order to increase his level of sexual gratification, and being able to brag about this to his fellow paedophiles, in order to gain respect and status. This is why I think it's laughable, when Brooker said to a psychologist that his desire for children was behind him, and he was now attracted to adult men, as though he could just flip a switch in his head. This man's sexual appetites are so depraved, and have likely been pressed for so many years, that I don't think this will ever change. However, Jab Brooker then caught HIV. I think this made him feel intense anger and utterly powerless. Someone had given him this condition, and there is no cure for it. He needs to make himself feel better, more in control of the situation, less angry about his circumstances. He could only achieve this by violating children, and now he had the perfect weapon. He could become the ultimate abuser. He could be the one who infected them with a condition that would impact them for the rest of their lives. No matter what they did, they would always remember Jad Brooker, the powerful man who caused this. Okay, so I have HIV, but now you do too, and I gave it to you. There is nothing you can do about it. Also, his condition was the perfect opportunity to get status amongst his sick circle of perverts. So you're raping children? I can beat that. Look, I'm trying to infect them with HIV, and here is the proof. There are so many layers of horror in this case. First and foremost, I have no doubt that the victims that Brooke had sex with, who were part of the court proceedings, are just a small fraction of those he abused. I mean, think about it logically. Jad Brooker was a committed paedophile. His whole life revolved around abusing children. Do you really think it's possible that in four years, he molested just six children? Even a number that was five times this, I think would be an underestimation. Due to this, I think there may be individuals out there who he did infect, and who now know they have HIV. Some of these people, potentially still children or young adults, may have ended their lives or attempted to do so, or at the very least, had their whole world turned upside down, knowing they have this condition. There's also the potential that some may have been infected, but have no idea and won't for a number of years, during which time they may inadvertently infect others. However, there's also the absolute evil of the people that Brooker was communicating with. These perverts no doubt encouraged him, praised him, for the fact that he was trying to infect children with HIV. If this point doesn't epitomise the true evil that exists in this world, I don't know what does. As for Jad Brooker, he should never be released. He will always be a danger to children. Had he not been stopped, God knows where his offending would have gone. He was a man who felt justified in infecting children with HIV. What the hell would he have done when he got bored of this, when he needed a new high, when he was no longer receiving praise from other paedophiles? Would he have gone through with his plan to traffic children? Would he have killed them? Would he have resorted to necrophilia? I don't think there was any end to the depravity that Brooker would have gone to, to get sexual gratification and to impress evil men for whom children's lives are utterly disposable. This was a very heavy case and I thank you for sticking it out with me. Please feel free to leave your comments below. If you like the content, then consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button. You can also send a one-off donation to support the channel using the thanks button. Please like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.